Thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is a public hearing of the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking. It is now called to order. In today's hearing, we will discuss Senate Resolution Number 536, which I filed together with the Majority Floor Leader, Senator Joel Villanueva. Uh, the name of the title of the resolution is Resolution Urging the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation Futures Thinking to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation on the Status of Human Resources for Health in the Philippines. Uh, we have um, a list of uh, uh, resource persons here, and I will acknowledge them as I call them to speak. Um, and I, I just like to give a short opening statement. Uh, the committee is hearing this because there are overlapping uh, concerns here. It's not just a question of, um, a la it's not just a simple labor question. Um, obviously, uh, we have a commitment to ensure, ensure or do our best that uh, we keep improving the health systems in our country. And so that's SDG 3, good health and well-being. And then there is SDG 8 on decent work and economic growth. We want our health health workers and all those uh, involved in the health sector to have decent work and that it contributes to economic growth. Um, to be clear, our provision in the existing law on the UHC Act states that uh, RA 11223 or the Universal Health Care Act mandates that the Department of Health, together with other stakeholders, shall ensure the formulation and implementation of a National Health Human Resource Master Plan that will provide policy and strategies for the appropriate generation, recruitment, retraining, regulation, retention, and reassessment of health workforce based on population health needs and to ensure continuity in the provision of the health program and services. All health professionals and healthcare workers shall be guaranteed permanent employment and competitive salaries. Let me stop there no, on that last phrase, competitive salaries. It is a reality that um, our human health resources, from our doctors to our nurses, our physical therapists, our, our pharmacists, um, and many others, our scientists, are very much in demand all over the world. No? They are amazing um, at their job. Um, they are well-trained. And uh, they have very bright futures in other countries. And what we want to ensure here in the discussion is that we are mindful of the right um, to explore greener pastures. But we would really like the Philippines to be a pasture that they are also content and happy with. I think that is what our goal should really be. Um, libre naman lahat, kahit naman ako nung uh, after college, nag-explore din naman akong mag-aral at magtrabaho sa ibang bansa. It's just a thing that I think uh, young people want to do. But in my case, um, as a lawyer, as, as a as a future lawyer, nag-decide ako na my futures in the Philippines. Pero for health workers, maganda talaga yung future din nila, yung offer sa kanila sa ibang bansa. Um, so, but this is what I'd like to start with. I know there will be lots of solutions. This is not just going to be the only hearing. There will be more hearings and technical working groups and consultations. There will be many solutions offered. Uh, and the Senate has done its part. Congress has done its part. You know, we've heard uh, different, um, of course, the UHC it's, Act itself is instrumental because it allowed, uh, it, it provides a more, uh, I think, a better career path uh, in the sense that there is more funding for healthcare. So, so, kahit ang mga doktor and, and other health professionals have earned a better living because of the uh, um, laws that we've passed uh, from the syntax law, uh, which which requires that uh, the proceeds go to um, uh, the implementation of the UHC and uh, health facilities. Eh, may doktor ka nga, wala naman siyang pagtatrabahuhan, wala namang health facilities, no? And also uh, medical assistance. So we have laws that we've passed uh, that will improve health care. But, um, and let me mention another law, uh, Dr. Parasabayan, my co-sponsor in this resolution, Senator Joel and I, both worked um, and continue to work on the implementation, on the passage of that law and now on the implementation but this is what I'd like to point out no? when I say that maraming possible solutions. So one solution, uh, yung Dr. Para Sabayan, precisely was to really um, uh, encourage uh, more 
more students to take up the the profession of um, to become a medical doctor by having more schools available to them in different provinces and by supporting these schools. No? Because gusto nga mag-doktor, ang layo naman sa kanila and congested na sa Metro Manila. Wala nang, wala nang chance na dagdagan pa yung capacity nila to absorb more students. So wala rin. So this law addresses that. But what I'd like to point out is something that some consider sensitive and difficult to discuss, but we have to have these difficult conversations. Asan ba ang need? Do we need more doctors? Do we need more nurses? Do we need more, more, uh, more of those to enter the allied profession? I humbly submit that we need all. We need all. Uh, nagkataon lang na yung batas na napasa is doctor para sa bayan. But in the, uh, in the budget, and I, I handle the budget of both education and health, we've included provisions uh, that will support uh, enrollments in these other allied professions. But that's what we need to discuss. Kasi nasan ba ang mga gaps? And ano bang profession ang kailangan natin itweak? Do we have, can we have the political will to change curriculums so that we can adapt to the need? So, hindi naman gagaling sa akin. I will wait for it to come from the the experts themselves, kasi marami talaga akong narinig na solutions, including uh, expanding the role of nurses, na maging nurse practitioner, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so let's explore that. Because uh, at the end of the day, we need to choose the best solutions, and we need to act now. So I will leave it at that. Um, let me just put on record that um, my colleague, Senator Joel Villanueva, has his opening statement, which he said to insert in the record. But allow me to just highlight a few things. In July 2018, Senator Joel co-sponsored the Universal Health Care for All Filipinos Act. And then this became the this became RA 11223. And... Um, He emphasizes that currently there is only one physician attending to the needs of an entire municipality with, say, 20 to 30 barangay. So this is the sad reality that uh, we are faced with. And um, as I mentioned, uh, we passed the Dr. Para Sabayan during the pandemic with a desire to um, to address that, that uh, gap that we have. As of December 2021, the current ratio for doctors has improved to 3.7 per 10,000 population uh, compared to 2.6 at the time we, we were deliberating this. So uh, let me just quote, thus we cannot stress enough how important this hearing is, largely because of the unprecedented nature of health emergencies and pandemics. We must devote all the time and efforts and even the scarce resource that we can muster because this issue is a matter of life and death. So I, I am um, inserting this entire speech of Senator Joel Villanueva into the record. So on that note, um, we can proceed with our hearing. Um, and one last administrative uh, detail. Um, many of you are familiar faces, so, but for those who are new, I have some rules. Uh, I'd like this to be interactive, so speak candidly. Huwag na huwag akong basahan ng speech kasi pwede naman ako magbasa pag hindi na tayo magkasama. I would prefer that you highlight uh, the key points uh, in your speech so that I can focus on it uh, uh, another time, but while we're, we are here, I want you to really just emphasize the key points that you uh, would like us to, to be aware of. Um, this hearing is online, so the other senators will be able to watch it any other time. Um, also, although maiksi lang itong hearing because unfortunately I have a very uh, busy schedule today, so when I have to cut it at 3 o'clock sharp, um, rest assured that there will be more time for more interaction. And I think that was it. Um, in as much as I want it to be as interactive as possible, and I will try to accommodate quick remarks to any statement, I may not be as interactive as I'd like it to be, just given that today is really uh, tight. Um, but I wanted to be sure that we could start this very important discussion so that while we are not in session for the entire month of April, we can work on it and uh, 
hopefully when we resume, baka may mas sponsor na tayo. Okay? All right. So let us start. Ah, and by the way, you are free to stand up anytime for a mobility break. And uh, hindi nga mahaba, but if you need to go to the CR, I'm not strict about it. I will tell you who's next so that nakaka-ready kayo. Um, otherwise, you know, feel free. Uh, and also, we don't have pet bottles here. So we have supposedly, we're supposed to have a water dispenser, but just... Can I just ask the page to ask who wants water so we can give them water, pero no pet bottles, please. Okay, so we are ready to start. Um, as I said, no, I will uh, mention the those present as we go along. Are they all speaking? Yes, yes. So do you want me to mention them by now, just no. because they're not no. here or later? No, no, no. Then let's start with him. Oh, we're starting with him. Ah, hindi di orange. Okay, okay, okay. Sige. All right. Um, so I normally start with DOH because obviously they're the agency uh, that is most involved in this. But we do have an international uh, expert with us. So with your indulgence, everyone, um, I appreciate uh, the technology that allows us to speak to our uh, to, to allow us to invite um, international experts. So let's call him. Um, this is Professor Sohail Inayatula, who has uh, who has so kindly um, graced my hearings in the past. Um, and uh, Professor Sohail is UNESCO Chair in Future Studies at the Segetera Center for Sustainability and Humanity. So um, Sohail, you have the floor. Please go ahead. Thanks so much, Senator Pia. Always great to be here. Uh, just go for five minutes. Is that enough? Uh, how long would you like me to yes. talk for? Okay. Yeah, that's that's good because we're on a tight. But if you will um, yep, indulge I, us in the future for a discussion, mm -hmm. we would love to have you again. Five minutes is perfect. I'll just screen share. Will it let me? It probably won't. Screen uh, share. Screen share. Yeah. No, of course we can do that. If if you can just put the yeah, it won't let me just if you can. Uh, the PowerPoint ahead, if you want to share that. If not, I'll, I don't need the PowerPoint. I can just talk about the story. Uh, we can skip the PowerPoint. Let me just talk for a few minutes. Oh, we're already good. Okay, so if we can go there, that's, they're doing it. the next slide, please. So basically, I know you have details to figure out, but just to frame this, this is based on 20 years working with Big Pharma, Bangladesh, WHO, hundreds of health groups in Asia. The first thing I've learned is there's an endless demand for health products. Whether pharma or wellness or well-being, the demand is endless and it keeps on going up. Second is the result of that is there's health inequity. Where you're born determines how long you live. The problem we have today throughout the region is the car road worldview, i.e. pollution, which is reducing our lived years. The solution is not just more wellness products or more drugs, but rethinking the design of the city. It's doctors, nurses, plus designers, what's called the walkable city, where everything is near. This means in Asia, transforming our desire for the car to the community. I was working with Mitsubishi Motors. They said, right now we sell cars. We should be focused on selling mobility, green, safe, pods using technology. So this means working with patients, empowering them so they define their health journey. So yes, it's nurses, doctors, therapists, but how do we help the patient redefine their life journey? So one conclusion that came out in many places is the multi-door health center. So there's a doctor and then there's different providers. The doctor gives the evidence base, who should you see? Is it mental therapy you need? Is it genomics? Is it 3D printing? Is it exercise? Is it a GP? So this is a new framework, and ultimately that's moving towards the home and the hospital. I know that seems a way out, but we have to start thinking people don't want to be in hospitals. We have to find funding for the home and the hospital. Essentially, that means moving from illness to prevention. My favorite metaphor is a mango a day keeps the doctor away. So let me go further. I'll skip the, go ahead, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so it's it's not doing it, that's okay. 
Uh, next, I'll just end with the conclusion here. Next. So in Brunei, we were talking about his live tweet. Next one. In Mongolia, we changed the story again. It's not the can or the carrot, but your stomach is not a garbage can. Much of health is changing the story. When working with disability futures, the one thing we found about human resources, there's a divide between carers and tech. So what the people with disability want, we want carers who understand technology, who can connect us with medical appointment, with banking, with shopping, with online communities, our loneliness. So the big HR thing is moving from illness to prevention, but carers who understand tech and touch. Next one. So this is the big transition we're seeing throughout the region. Now to make this happen, it's empowering the patient. What does the patient want by 2030? I own my data. Who owns my health data? I expect privacy. I am involved in my own health journey. I work seamlessly with AI. I have access to my digital twin. Every patient needs a digital twin. And finally, there's a movement between nature, self, medical environment, and your personal life journey. This has to be seamless. Next one. At the same time, we're seeing transitions on the employee. It's not just traditional medical systems which are hierarchical. It's really working anytime, anywhere from anyone. So we're using health diagnostics for prevention and connecting with humans to make us feel better and help us on our health journey. So this is we're sharing information. We're collaborating, adaptive learning, democratization of health. Next slide, please. So this is moving the workforce diversity and inclusion, meaningful work, and the employee experience engagement and performance. This is a major shift in how we see HR. Next, far more adaptive, far more flexible. Next slide, please. Again, the whole notion of the multi-door health center. So this is helping the Philippines move towards adaptive, high tech, high touch, caring for the ager, green products, and rethinking city design. It won't happen without pollution transforming, better food, taxation on junk food, because we know the demand for pharma and wellness is infinite. Final slide. So what I've done to try to is paint you a view of the future. Care plus tech, home hospital, aging in place, flexible work, and partnering with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sohail. Five minutes is not enough. I, no, this is really just like an intro, but um, I hope you'll indulge us for for futures um, future hearings where we can probably go into details because um, for our colleagues here, um, Sohail's focus is on the future, and most of us, our work, in as much as we'd like to be futures thinking. We're stuck in the now, no, because we, we have to always be putting out fires all the time. So I always appreciate it when we have a futures thinker with us because they really help us, you know, try to find time to really focus on where we want to be. So thank you so much for your time, Sohil, and we'll be in touch. See you again. Thank you, Senator. Please. Okay, so let's go now to um DOH. Um you said Kenneth Ronquillo will be the one to to present, uh, and then after DOH will be Chad and then PRC. Thank you very much, uh, Senator, and uh, good afternoon. I'll be giving a quick presentation on the uh, updates and implementation of the National Human Resource for Health Master Plan. And we have the next uh, slide. Yeah, okay, thank you. So for the master plan, we actually use a labor market approach to show uh, HRH mobility from production of health workers and professionals to being part of the workforce and exit and re-entry of the health workforce. This framework highlights not only the key HRH provisions in the UHC Act, but also the overall goals of the health workforce. These are the sustainable production of human resources, practice ready training, job generation, and competitive salaries, accessibility and retention mechanisms, as well as productivity and career development, all of which lead to providing the right number, competence, and skill mix of human resources, performing at the right work, at the right place, and the right time with the right compensation. 
Next slide, please. Uh, the next few slides, uh, we took this from uh, from Ched. So, madalian na lang po siguro kasi may Ched din naman po dito. But we actually look at uh, graduates of the professions that is being uh, regulated by uh, PRC. This is a 10-year period of uh, doctors, midwives, medical technology, and pharmacy. And we provided here the 10-year average enrollees and five-year average enrollees of these uh, professions. Uh, take note that uh, during the pandemic, medyo nag-decrease yung number of enrollees natin and graduates as well. The next slide, very specific for uh, nurses over the past uh, 10 years to po, uh, but also because uh, there has been a moratorium on the number of uh, nursing schools over time. Maria, can I just make a comment? Yes, ma'am. This is on enrollees, right? Uh, graduates na po. Enrollees ah, okay. to so graduates enrollees, na po. Graduates to. Yes, po. Okay, but board passer, dapat may slide uh, yes, to, show that, yes. to show the difference. Because to be clear, I appreciate that you pointed out that uh, there's a factor, which is the moratorium. But I also want to see, um, dahil nagka moratorium, kumonti bang pumapasa? So, yun, yun long. Kasi dumadat, pumupunta na tayo sa argument na kaya pala konti lang kulang na yung dahil may moratorium. Eh, baka naman, baka naman mas konti lang din ng aral ng aral, tapos hindi naman papasa. Tapos ang, ang karir nila, wala namang kinalaman na sa nursing dahil din naman sila pumasa. Diba? So I want to I wanna be sure that you discuss that. Yeah. Lang. Sige po. Uh, the next slide, please. So this one's the one for dental medicine, nutritionist, dietitian, PTOT, and uh, rad tech. So we see increases over a period of time, but uh, during the pandemic, bumaba na po yung mga uh, number of graduates natin. Well, the next slide provides us a summary. You know, before you go to the next slide, yes, I just, just want to take, uh, take a few seconds to just look at it. So, I cannot see kasi the lead. Ah, ayun pala ang legend. So, itong bumaba is the radiological and x-ray technology. Yan yung babang baba, yung from 3 to now naging 1,000. But there, there might be some other factor there kasi yung iba naman, yung PT, same-same, medyo paakit pa nga ng konti. Uh, the one, the black one, which is dental medicine, bumaba siya, but not as drastic. Not, yeah. So, anong ibang factor? Do you know? Well, anong ibang factor na ba't ganito ka drastic yung baba ni, ni, ano, ni PT and OT? The decrease uh, of the uh, PT and OT, yung one din kasi ma'am, positions that are available during the workforce side. So, uh, we have uh, enrollees, pero hindi sila nakakahanap ng uh, work dito. That's also a big factor kung bakit yung enrollees kumukonti doon sa uh, PT, uh, OT. Really? Kasi I know there's a shortage, so there must really yes. be. Asa na ba si, ano dito? Sino ba yung representative natin sa... Madam Chair. Labor side. Madam Chair, if I may. Joel, is that you? Yes. Yes, sorry. I know your I voice. I cannot see your face. Yeah. Pero kilala <laughs> ko yung boses mo kahit saan. I, so, I know. I'm so go sorry. Ahead, go ahead. I, I'm Major, so sorry. Go I, ahead. Could, I couldn't show myself because I'm mobile. It's okay. I'm having a hard it's time. It's okay. No worries. I, I was just Don't wondering worry about, about, about that data that you mentioned because I really feel that there's a big shortage. I, for one, has been having a hard time looking for OT and the PT. I know, I know. And so I'm a little bit concerned about it. And at the same time, Madam Chair, if I may, uh, with the indulgence of our resource person, when he was presenting uh, some of the data on human resources for health uh, ratio, I was wondering if we have that uh, ratio per 10,000 population because I remember during that time, during the budget hearing, when we asked the DOH, the latest data was uh, uh, 17.48 per 10,000. But the requirement, as we were told, 44.5 per 10,000, which means uh, at least you have about 14.3 positions, 27 nurses, 2.8 midwives are uh, required. Uh, to to reach that 44.5, but right now we are. Uh, I mean, the last data that was that was given to us is for for 17.48 per 10,000. So I would just would like to know where when 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 do we uh, target to achieve the ideal ratio and what steps 
have we taken uh, so far? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Majority Floor Leader. Actually, that's a good question. I, I think you and I have had this discussion on the floor, no, in for on various occasions. And uh, Dr. Tony Dance later on, who's uh, who's, uh, who's here online. I remember he shared with us in one hearing uh, something about how many years it would take, assuming yung when we discussed the doctor para sa bayan, meron siyang presentation niya na how many years would it take para we will have sufficient number of doctors. And meron yun. I forget the number, but maybe later he can um, answer this. And then yung nurses, never, never in our lifetime natin ma-achieve yun. So may, may ganung mga numbers. Um, but if I may also second the observation of uh, our majority floor leader na I personally am aware that malaki ang shortage ng PT and OT. Napakahirap maghanap. The OTs have been very, um, uh, how do I put it? Like yung, yung understanding ko sa OT uh, 20 years ago, I, I don't know if, if they're... What do you call this? There, I, I don't know if we've expanded the work that they do or the demand is just really there now because people understand more the importance of the interventions of OTs. So mas marami lang nagahana. Pero grabe ang demand. So I was telling my staff na, uh, and and I I tossed this back na to DOH because obviously you'll be central in all this planning. Na parang medyo mahirap yon na if if you tell us na wala silang trabaho and yet and yet even um in terms of personal um. Uh, maraming PT na freelance, di ba? They are connected with um, directly with uh, doctors who will then recommend them to their patients. So whether employed sila or freelance sila, maraming ganun. At may ganun, maraming din ganun na OT. And from what I know, sobrang kulang. So there's a misunderstanding here in the reporting or at least yung nakakarating sa enrollees na feeling nila wala silang trabaho. Okay, so that's one. That's one of my, that's already one of my, um, my uh, takeaways here. Now, there seems to be a uh, yes, lack of understanding or lack of information na nakakarating sa enrollees uh, or even their parents kasi at that age, very instrumental ang parents to help guide the child kung anong course ang kukunin nila for them to think na walang demand for PTs and OTs. Okay? So, on that alone, I would like sa next uh, sa technical work, technical ano, to get the side of the practitioners in this field and and like the sports medicine doctors, which is an area that I'm very much present, marami akong sports medicine doctors, uh, to find out kung sa tingin nila may kulang yan. Okay? Anyway, that's my first takeaway. Go ahead, Yusek. Okay, ma'am. So if may I just respond muna sa, sa PTOT, uh, what we were trying to say is that while there's a need for PTOT, we do not have as much as uh, civil service positions for them. So, yeah, but, but they are yung... not the only employer. The yes. civil service is not the only employer. So, thank you for that clarification. I would have assumed nga na ganun. But is that enough reason for for the, for that to go down? I mean, you would think that um, and and maybe to follow na lang kasi baka hindi na tayo maka hindi na natin marinig yung iba. Dami ko ng tanong sa inyo pa lang. Um, the state universities, uh, at least for the state universities, no, but for both, no, even the private HEIs, dapat alam nila. Dapat alam nila. So pag nag-counseling yung bata na saan ako, ano kayang course ko, maayos nilang masasabi yun na ito ang future mo. Okay? So yun, ang kailangan nating ano yan. So so when we get, when we talk to Ched, um, later on, no, can you, let's, I'll invite Pasok, um, Let's find out which, I mean, you know, let's randomly ask courses that offer PT, occupational therapy, uh, radi radi radiotech, o tanong ilan yon, tapos tanong natin sa kanila, bakit, bakit bumaba dyan, wala bang trabaho, pati sa mga private, wala? Okay, go ahead, sir. Okay, then. So if we may continue, sa, this is a uh, summary of all the enrollees, graduates, and uh, board passers of the uh, previous slides that uh, I've talked about. If we see that's only about 22% of the enrollees have graduated, and those who pass the board exams are only about 16% of the average enrollees, or that's about 73% of the average uh, graduates. So marami pong uh, enrollees so, mababa. Let, ano, ah, let, me, let me say something about this. This is total na of what? Enrollees of what? Of various, the, various courses? Yes, yes. Okay, so, so 
uh, let, let's let's use 2000 maybe mga bandang 2019 so the figure of enrollees is 226000 correct for the record no importante ito kasi para matulungan din natin ng media friends natin to to share the the correct data so tama i'm looking at your at your slide no 226315 ang enrollees right around 2019 correct okay and then in yellow is the graduates 43195 but does that presuppose 226 yung enrollees so do i assume divided by 4 ang um, first year second year third year fourth year so you only expect na one fourth ang graduate baka I, I, I don't want to jump to a conclusion na, ha, 226, that's 43 lang yung nag-graduate, or are you talking about 226 who, total yan, of all the enrollees, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year? Well, of all so the... How you know, ha? So this slide doesn't tell us the dropout rate. No, o kaya nga. So, so it's possible if I divide that into four or five, and, and when you say human resource, um, you're also including doctor. Oh, eh, so ang hirap ko i-assume in one year, tama ba? Do you guys understand me? Tama ba assumption ko? It's hard for me to make any conclusion with the 43,000 numbers of graduate with 226 enrollees because it's possible that um that you have a 95% graduation pero only only the graduating number only the graduating students will be represented here, right? Oh, so I can't form any conclusion. It's not correct to say I don't know the purpose of that slide. Okay, then, ma'am. Yeah. So yeah, really, these are uh, uh, enrollees are entrants to the courses, those so completed graduates and board passers. So, but I understand your point. Enrollees are freshman I, enrollees, or not necessarily yung completo yung na. Yung dropouts, ma'am, ang hindi na consider dito. Oh, kaya nga. Oh. So I won't draw any conclusion, kasi okay. that would be unfair. And believe me, if somebody else was here, they will make that wrong conclusion. So let's not let's not be let's be careful, kasi dun ako papunte. So so, but what is this footnote that you have? Only about twenty two percent of enrollees have graduated, or is that wrong? Do I assume that's wrong now? If we use yung factor, kasi hindi na factor out dito yung mga uh, dropouts, then this will change then, ma'am. Because we started only with uh, enrollees, meaning uh, entrance to uh, these specific courses. So what we're trying to say is that if we uh, put in, if we factor in yung mga uh, dropouts per, uh, per year, this may change. But you also have a conclusion here that those who pass the board is 16%. So, well, uh, of the graduates, naman yan, ma'am. So, of the total uh, graduates, so those who completed the uh, uh, courses, 73% uh, uh, passed the licensure. Okay, sige. Can you come back to the next hearing and tell us na dapat sundan mo yun eh, of the freshmen who enrolled oh, in PT, yeah. ilan sila across the board? Kung sinabi mo sa akin, 1,000. By the time na fourth year at nag-graduate, ilan na si 1,000? 900? 800? Diba? Yun yung kailangan natin. Yeah. And then, yung nag-graduate, ilan ang pumasa? Oh. So, can you break it down per per um, per per specialty? Per, per, per specialties? Oh, kasi ang hirap naman ma-generalize. Okay. Um, and then also the percentage of passing, uh, also based on the, on the different specialization. Kasi it's also interesting to know na, but, but ganon, baka yung iba higher than others. Why? Lower than others. Why? And what is the trend in other countries? Bakit na iba sa atin, di ba? Okay, sige. Let's move on. Well, the uh, next slide will uh, show us the HRH requirements based on uh, SDG indicators. Uh, this is a collection from uh, various sources of uh, uh, data. We use the data in the uh, DOH collected by our regulatory bureaus, about 90% of uh, public uh, health facilities and about 50% of the private facilities are su submitted, and this is the data that we have. So we looked at physicians, nurses, and uh, midwives based on the demand that we have to put up a ratio of 44.5 per 10,000 population. So the ratio 
based on uh, WHO references says that uh, we need 14 at least per 10,000 physicians, 27 for nurses, and around three uh, midwives per 10,000. So that is the recommended ratio by WHO. But the supply as we uh, have now for uh, doctors, nurses, and physicians looking at the number of uh, physicians, so meron ho tayong variance of around uh, 70,000. Uh, but for nurses and midwives in absolute uh, numbers, we have more uh, nurses in physicians. But we're only talking here about the licensed, licensed health professionals. Because in the next slide, next slide please, we'll uh, show you naman yung practicing, the truly practicing uh, HRH in the uh, country. So getting in the uh, same number of the demand, the supply now is uh, down to 283, 154. So out of the licensed physicians, these are the practicing uh, doctors, nurses, and uh, midwives in the country, which gives us a variance naman sa, sa ratios natin. So while we have... So uh, the other added, slide reflected what versus this? Yung nakapasa lang po sa license. Ah, uh, but not necessarily practice. practice. Okay, yes, so that, that that is the sensitive matter that I wanted to discuss, no? Because in the doc Doctor Para Sabayan and in the budget that I mentioned that we have for allied professions, uh, we need to ensure that these are people who want to practice and stay in our country. Bakit naman tayo magsusustento? And I will never change my position on this. Yes, I feel that the country has an obligation to educate its people, but to educate them to the point na magiging doktor ka, and then sa ibang bansa ka pala magpa-practice, I genuinely feel that that is not fair to the Filipino taxpayers. Kasi uh, education naman should be available to all. Pero yung maging doktor or even maging nurse, napaka we 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 spend and i intend to put in even more resources to ensure that they have really an even better education more better facilities better equipment so kung aalis pala sila then we really need to discuss this kasi uh, some people are afraid to discuss it kasi baka daw sumama yung loob magtampo magalit eh bakit ka gagastusan kung hindi ka naman dito magtatrabaho di ba Pero, like I said, we will assist. Of course, we will assist because everybody deserves an education. But we have to determine that those who will really, we have to determine who will really stay here and serve the country, at least for a certain number of years. Because I've already heard so much bad um, feedback, um, both not just normally, because public hospital, well, in fairness, and daming public hospital na, na ang gagaling uh, sa private hospital pa nga, no? Because, uh, we've been able to increase our salaries, di ba, for nurses. So, medyo mas maganda pa nga yung kinikita nila sa public. So, yung private ngayon nagsasuffer. And just like education, I always say the public, the private sector is our partner in the delivery of education, the delivery of healthcare. So, what are we gonna do? These are problems that I need you to present me with solutions with, okay? Anyway, go ahead. It's very dismal, but it is what it is. So the next slide, this is an uh, uh, old slide, but it uh, provides us the uh, health professional uh, uh, migration. Sige, both... Again, I have a question. Sorry, yes, pero magaganda yung data mo eh. When you say 156,000 temporary migrants, and maybe you say Olalia can help us here, they're only temporary because as far as we know, they are not permanent residents. But the chances na bumalik yan dito are probably small. Oh, correct. Let the record show that Yusek Olalia is nodding his head. So is Director Banson and maybe so many other people here. So, liwanagin lang natin, di ba? They may not have permanent uh, resident or citizenship in other countries. But what nga is the chan What are the chances na babalik sila? Uh, our experts now are telling us parang mababa yon, no? Because you're nodding your heads. Okay, I just wanted to yeah. put that on record. The experience here, ma'am, is that uh, they return here to get new contracts again Yun na nga. and then return. Yun na nga. So I think, I think, I mean, it's it's valid data, but you might need to disaggregate it some more to be more specific, di ba? Kasi I really don't care what their status is there. I mean, in that sense, my, my job now, ha? Uh, of course, and that's your job, Yusek, to look after their welfare. They are still Filipino citizens. But my my job now 
is to find out how many are willing to work in this country. Diba? So whether permanent sila doon or temporary, eh, wala silang balak magtrabaho pala dito eh. Diba? So that's what we need to, ano, or what can we do to, when they come back here, maingit sila sa mga kasama nila, ganda-ganda pala ng buhay mo dito. What can we do to make that happen? Diba? If I may continue, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, the uh, next slide is a summary of the HR gaps. Uh, we use this study uh, for the Human Resources for Health Master Plan. Very small, ma'am, but uh, this is uh, the adjusted demand and supply of uh, selected human resources from 2020 to uh, 2040. In each of these year, uh, we looked at uh, the requirements for go both government and uh, the private uh, health sector and the gaps that we'll be having per year to see to it that we comply with the uh, requirements of uh, WHO and that will be about 44.5 per uh, 44.5 per 10,000 uh, uh, health workers. So we just undermined here uh, year 2023 uh, to 2028. At the end of this uh, administration, we'll be uh, needing about 26,000 more doctors in government and more in the private sector. That's 114,000. In, for a nurse, yes, that's about 110,000, but more in the private sector, that's 247,000. Uh, and uh, midwives, that's 39,000 in government, and 26 lesser in uh, the private sector, that's 26,000. Uh, and then we have the rest also of the uh, cadres. The next slide will provide us the the cost, the summary of the costs. Uh, cost, there are two that we costed here. Cost of training or producing a, a health worker and the number one, uh, the second one, the salaries and uh, benefits of the health worker, both in uh, government and in the private sector. So what you see here are actually the total cost of uh, training and uh, salaries and benefits per uh, administration. So if we look at 2023 to 2028 uh, for the cadres that we mentioned earlier, that will be about seven, 670 uh, million to cost for uh, billion to cost for training and for uh, salaries. We can disaggregate you this mean for post uh, hindi po, yung preserve yung producing. education. Yes, ma'am. Education, nila. education. Okay. Yes, I understand. Po. Okay. Um, sige, let, let's pause there. I'll, I'll refrain from commenting, um, except to say nga na kahit ano pang sabi mong number dyan. So, this is in the billions, right? Tama yes. ba? Yeah. Eh, kung aalis din lahat yan, bakit tayo gagastos? Yeah. So, that's what we have to go back to in the next hearing. We'll bring in NEDA, we'll bring in whoever private sector pa to figure out. What can we do to make them stay? Because I am not going to support that kind of budget if aalis lang naman sila. And having said that, aalis at aalis talaga yun. So, okay, mag-report na sabi ni Pia Kaitano, huwag silang umalis. Kasi karapatan naman nila pumunta kung saan bansa nila gustong pumunta. But what I'm, what, what, if a fast track ko na, what, what I want to happen, maybe in, by the second hearing or the third hearing, is we accept, and we determine that the only solution, not the only, sorry, I, I'm very open to other solution. One of the solutions is, is these bilateral agreements with other countries wherein we recognize the reality that they will keep on knocking on our doors, breaking down our doors, kukunin talaga nila yung health workers natin. Huwag na natin i-deny yun. And we want our people to have those options. That is their right. No? Karapatan nila mag-decide sa nila gusto mag-tumirat, mag-trabaho, etc. Pero gusto ko, may mga agreements tayo in place such that pag kinuha niyo yung mga health workers natin, ito kapalit. Magpapaaral kami. Magpapagawa kami ng building. ba? So, until we do that, and I've had this hearing in 2004, sadly, 2005, wala naman nangyari. Uh, my job is just to have this hearing and to push for these changes, pero it's the executive that will make it happen. Um, we'll just be noting these figures, and we'll just be we'll just be funding these young people who will decide that they will go abroad. And we're not 
even trying to reach out and we so that's why we need not just um DMW but we also need foreign affairs and maybe you can recommend you sec walalia kung sino pang mga ibang um pwede natin isama dito sa hearing na ito okay doon papunta yung solution na naisip ko but as i said resource persons and people uh, online i'm very open to others marami pa that's just one anyway go ahead so uh we have the we have had the approval of the National Human Resources for Health uh, Master Plan at uh, the SDC of uh, NEDA, and what we are awaiting now is the approval of a draft executive uh, order at the NEDA board, which is headed by the uh, president. But this has not yet been uh, forwarded to uh, the office of the president, uh, Senator. So, kasama ba yung sinabi ko? Oh, yung bilateral agreements? Yeah, the bilateral uh, agreements. Okay, kasi nga, um, for, for everyone's information, that's not my brainchild. That's not new. Matagal lang umiikot yan. So nakakaiyak lang na hanggang ngayon, di pa rin natin ginagawa. So sana magawa na natin. Okay. So, well, the uh, next slide just shows us the uh, current work that we're doing in terms of uh, deployment of human resources for uh, health. So as of January 31, we have already deployed about 16,410 of the different uh, cadres that we have. But within the approved uh, budget, that's about uh, 24,000 uh, uh, human resources for health. So our regions are currently uh, still uh, putting up the numbers, madam. So we also have the uh, scholarships, uh, scholars for uh, doctors, nurses, and uh, uh, no, not the uh, uh, nurses. Uh, scholarships for uh, for uh, doctors and uh, midwives. But uh, when we had the approval of the doctor para sa bayan, uh, nagtra transition na po kami sa transfer of this uh, scholarship program to uh, CHED. So we're just completing the numbers that uh, we have now, and then it's already CHED that will take on the scholarship program for uh, the different countries. So currently, we have about uh, 2,539 uh, scholars under the UH. We have started uh, first year ngayon, nag-transfer na sila sa, uh, sa CHED in transition. And then, uh, according to our uh, meetings with CHED by 2024, yung pharmacy, Medical technology and midwifery will also be transferred already to CHED. But we'll just complete uh, what we have already in the Department of Health. So as the uh, last slide for the production side, the direction is to utilize the concessions obtained from partner or receiving countries to enhance our uh, HRH production. So part of this will be uh, funding of uh, scholarship grants. We are also contemplating of considering uh, both local and global demand for HRH cadres for uh, forecasting and uh, projection. This is uh, a study that we're doing now because we're also being uh, questioned back at the uh, magpo-forecast din tayo ng, ng demand. But because uh, this has been institutionalized in the country, so we're looking at ways by which we can look at uh, manners that uh, we maintain uh, human resources in the... Uh, Definitely. I, I will defend oh, oh. you if people are criticizing because it is stupid and uh, it, it would be... it would Let me change my choice of words. It would be ignorant of us to make plans without considering that. Look, the reality is X percent and fill in the blanks later on are really leaving. So bakit hindi mo kakausapin? Para ka namang in denial, no? Na para ka nagpapatakbo ng public school tapos lahat ng parents gusto pala mag-private school. Di, hindi mo kakausapin mo yung parents, tatanungin mo rin na ba't, ba't kayo pumunta sa private school o private school, anong meron sa inyo? So by all means, you should continue having these, um, these studies and determining what's going on and, and what we can do about it. So for uh, workforce, we're also looking at uh, return service agreements uh, as a national uh, policy, not just for uh, government, state universities, mm -hmm. but also uh, private uh, institutions. Well, there, for me, there must be some form of um, payback. No, Like I am a graduate of UP. We were never asked for return service, but until today and until the day I die, I will do, I keep on doing what 
I can because there is no formal um, structure in place to pay back, to give back to the university that gave me my education. So if we have to be the ones to put the structure, let's do that. Kasi marami namang willing, pero medyo yung volunteerism sa Philippines, kailangan mong i-define ng konti to, to allow the people to feel more, ano, for it to be more con conducive. So I, I'm okay that you come up with more programs on that. And uh, another uh, moving forward concerns that the updating of the Magna Carta for uh, health workers. We've talked about a lot about Magna Carta in the public sector, but not really in the uh, private sector. And this has been a realization during the uh, surge, not in sa, sa COVID. So we'll work on that. For exit and uh, migration, strengthening bilateral agreements to contain specific provisions on action both from the sending and the receiving countries to enforce the implementation and monitoring of uh, agreements, both offers and requests from receiving uh, countries. Uh, examples of this will be uh, scholarships, uh, trainings, uh, exchanges of uh, expertise. So that ends the presentation, uh, Sen. Okay, so let me just post um, a few concerns based on that. But like I said, let's have this discussion later on kasi hindi na tayo makakarating sa ibang resource person if I keep asking questions. So I'm just going to park these questions. What I need to hear either both from DOH and from the other resource persons uh, at some point is um, what changes in the curriculum and for lack of a better term as I am not in the health profession, the scope of work, ano ba tawag doon, yung expertise ng uh, mga health professions when they graduate? Because uh, in other countries, um, yun nga, like yung sa nurses pa lang, uh, they've um, empowered them in many ways. No? Merong uh, yung uh, nurse practitioner, uh, doctor's assistant. Um, I I'm quite familiar because I've been studying it on my own, but again, it's not my profession. I want to know from the different, maybe in succeeding hearings, we can also invite the other professions to find out na, are you willing to take these steps? Are you willing to redefine? No, because 17, 18 years ago, when I started these hearings, um, medyo very protective ang mga in the, ang bawat profession, sa kanilang profession. Uh, I don't know if that's changed. I hope it has changed because no matter how much I think a doctor or a nurse would like to tend to their patients, the numbers tell us that they are not capable, humanly incapable, which brings me to my next topic, yung hindi human, uh, AI and uh, digital uh, healthcare. Who will talk about this? Who, who has the expertise to share this with us? If not, I will also get foreign experts to share this with us. Kasi uh, during the pandemic, di ba, nakita naman natin na, na find na, na biglang natanggap yung online consultation. Kung hindi pa nga nagka-pandemic, very resistant ang both doctors and patients to that. But now it's a thing. And I think, I, I personally think that's great because it gives more access to everybody, kahit na yung may kaya mag-afford, saving on the time and everything. Um, pero ano ba yung downside? The downside is there's no, what do you call that, face-to-face -face contact and uh, ano ba tawag doon? Um, the examination. The examination won't happen, no? Um, but I think over and above, it's a good thing because uh, more people will have access, especially those those who really don't have access. But have we put that in place? Is that in place? It's one thing like to say in Taguig City, it's in place. Pero kung talagang pupilitin, pwede naman mag-tricycle, pwede naman mag-kotse, papunta doon kung, kung kailangan. E yung far-flung areas nga na kahit gustuhin, wala naman kalya doon, hindi man makapunta doon yung doktor kahit gusto niyang pumunta doon. So, in place ba itong digital ano, um, technology to make that happen? Okay? So, but for the next hearings na lang, kasi I need to move on. Thank you very much, Yusek Ronquillo. So, let me now call on Ched, um, Executive Director, uh, Pinites Haro, and then please be ready, PRC, followed by TESDA, and then DMW. Uh, thank you very much, Senator uh, Senator Pia. Um, so on the part of, of CHED, uh, under the UHC, we have the several uh, responsibilities. One is to reorient healthcare professional and healthcare worker curricula towards primary health care with emphasis on public health and primary care. 
determine recommended areas of study in public health to be incorporated in the curriculum of all health sciences education and incorporate educational outcomes focusing on primary care in the education programs, the scope of licensure examinations, and continuing professional development. So far, uh, Madam Chair, we have already integrated uh, primary health care in our health professions education programs being regulated by PRC, including, of course, medicine, nursing, midwifery, dentistry, medical technology, pharmacy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, nutrition, dietetics, optometry, optometry radiology, uh, technology, respiratory therapy, and speech pathology. Um, since the supply of uh, practitioners are coming from higher education institutions, Ms. Uh, Madam Chair, we take note that based on the records of uh, DOH, uh, there is enough supply for licensed nurses and midwives, but not enough supply for practicing nurses. We take note also that there is not enough supply for practicing doctor, uh, doctors, nurses, and midwives. Um, in order to address the this this clear to be clear you take note of and i want to be sure kung tama yon kung sa license lang na ano yung inuna mo nurse nurses kung, po kung sa license nurses. lang there is enough tama ba i think ma'am uh our good uh rector here is referring to uh numbers of health workers in absolute numbers so, yung nakapasa sa license, ang sinasabi niya adequate naman, which is also is that uh, accurate ba? a part of the information that uh, we have. Okay, so let's dissect this later, no? just because again, in the interest of time. Kasi my understanding in another, in a consultation I had with, an, with a group of health professionals, no experts, um, was that kulang na kulang, so kukuha tayo ngayon sa mga underboard, which... Of course, it's already a step down. Uh, let's just let's admit that because hindi pa nga sila pumasa ng board. So it's not because walang license. It's just that they're gainfully engaged in something else. Uh, and that includes not being in the country. Tama ba? Uh, so that's the big chunk, that they are not in the country. Okay, sige. So parang, I think, again, you have to disaggregate that kasi wala, na, wait, wala ka na magagawa dun eh. Yun na yun eh. They're not even in our jurisdiction. Yung kaya mong, kaya mong i-manipulate pa ang figures, na not manipulate figures, yung kaya mo pang, um, the reality that you can change are those who are in the country. ba na bakit sila, ba't hindi ng profession nila? Uh, kasi they'd rather be a, uh, what's the what's the in job now? Um, call center. They'd rather do that. So so let's be so let's let's face that reality, diba? And kung ganun din lang, um let's explore what I, again, that's where I remember this hearing. The reason we're having this hearing in my committee is I'm balancing the various SDGs. They have the right to decent work. So if hindi nila kayang buhayin yung pamilya nila practicing their profession, it's a no-brainer na maghahanap sila ng something na mabubuhay sila, di ba? That's why binabalance ko tong needs na to. Eh. I'm very mindful na na this uh, SDG 8 on decent work and economic growth goes hand-in-hand hand with SDG 3, which is health and well-being, di ba? So anyway, I, I interrupted you just because I sabi ko, tama ba yun? Eh kasi nga, the bulk are not here. So parang, parang wala rin. <laughs> Yes, uh, Madam Chair, to continue. Uh, so in order to address these concerns, of course, for doctors, for the supply of doctors, Madam Chair, we, we recognize that there is not enough supply, both for the license and the practicing. Of course, um, through the help of uh, the Senate, we have the Dr. Para Sabayan. We have already implemented the Medical Scholarship Return Service um, Law, the Seed Fund for State Universities and Colleges. Uh, for, S for MSRS, um, as of 2021-2022, we have uh, 400 uh, scholars. For 2022-2023, we have more or less 900 applic applicants, Madam Chair. So uh, these are already, um, of course, the, the, the goal here is to have uh, doctors who will return to their uh, provinces once they have graduated. Um, first, the seed fund for... Can I pause you there? And I, this is really more for my staff to take note of this concern that I have. Um, when you said that ideally you want them to return to the provinces, no? I occasionally come across um, international um, uh, reports or, or opinions, no? um, writings, wherein cities cities um, in different countries will offer 
something that makes it very enticing for a certain profession to move to their city, whether it's teachers, kung ano man yung in demand na yun, whether it's teachers, nurses, or doctors. So I'd like to bring in the uh, League of, of uh, Cities here um, and whoever else you think can assist us. Na dapat ganun eh, no? As we are empowering um, our LGUs, di ba? We have devolution. Alam niyo naman yun, another thing that DOH has to deal with. I don't know if Ched has to deal with that. Not really, kasi SUCs naman, no? Medyo ninyo problema yan. Um, as we are empowering the LGUs, I'd like to be, I'd love to see that, no? That the LGUs are now saying na, come to my, come to my province, come home to my province, kasi dito, nag-aalaga kami ng doktor. Dito, nag-aalaga kami ng nurse. Dito, nag-aalaga kami ng teacher. Eto benefits para sa kanila. Papatayo kami ng condominium na may swimming pool. I mean, whatever it is that entices them, because that is what, that is the game. Like, why would they want to come back? Now, I know of so many, I have friends all over the country, and Ang laki ng na, ang laki ng pwedeng i-offer ng probinsya, yung ang ganda ng probinsya life tapos you have all the amenities there. Ang ganda pero hindi hindi tayo ganoon mag-isip eh. Pero in other countries, ganoon sila mag-isip, no? The cities will will compete um for the best and and offer them not always monetary, di ba? Pero like in the US, di ba, yung school districts nila magandang paaral dito. So a family would like to move there because their children will get very good free public education. Whatever, that's my point. So can somebody also be mindful of this? And that's where I'll tie it back to our first speaker, Dr. Suhail. If you notice in the beginning, he talked about walkable cities. From my talk, from my discussions with a lot of migrant workers, um, especially those with, um, with degrees, with licensure uh, uh, professions, of course, of course, the the salary is attractive, no. But it's the it's the it's the idea of being able to live in a walkable city, in a city that has a park, in a city where they feel safe, in the in a in a country where hindi na babalil na governor, you know. So we can talk about anything, but that's that's those are pulls um, that take away our ano. So so this hearing should not be limited to what DOH can do, what CHED can do to improve the quality of, of, our, of our health professionals and talk about the salaries and the distribution. It should be a whole of nation approach, which brings me to the other SDGs. It's 17 partnerships and strong institutions, diba? Okay, so isipin nyo lahat yun, kung sino yung resource persons natin dyan. Anyway, go back to you, Attorney Benitez. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Um, so, under sa MRS po, I would like to emphasize that uh, they would have to return to um, to work in public health office, government hospital, in their hometown, uh, or in the student's uh, scholar's home province, or underserved uh, municipality closest to the scholar's hometown. Um, so, well, since uh, they, are still in, uh, they are still students, we are yet to see, uh, Madam Chair, kung talagang uh, um, they will go back to their uh, scholar, to the hometown. Pero, um, this, pero may provision naman po sa law. Correct. But this is what I want to ask you. And I, I'd love you to have a small group meeting with my staff, uh, particularly DOH and CHED, but anyone who wants to participate is welcome. This is my question. Uh, I had a hearing, no, I, ha I had a consultation at a hearing with um, Ateneo de Zamboanga. Are you sure? Not, not Davao, Ateneo de Zamboanga. Ateneo de Zamboanga Medical School. And it was explained to me how they take pride in the different approach to, to teaching the future doctors. They really ingrain in them the importance of primary health care uh, in the community. So it's community health care. So you know what? They have the highest, and I, I'm happy to get other figures. They have the highest retention. They stay in the, they really go back to their communities because their practice apparently from first year includes going to the community, serving the community. So, uh, and again, this is not my profession. I, I don't mean to, you know, to pretend that I'm an expert. I'm not. But even if I compare it to other uh, SUCs that offer med school, parang dun ko lang nakita na ganun kalalim yung kanila, ganun kalalim, kasi nga from first year pa lang. So parang for me, it's not enough that there's a provision in the law. It's not enough that you teach primary health care when you did not, for the four years that you had them, you did not, you did not, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Parang hindi nyo talaga pinaramdam sa kanila yung importance ng community nila. Diba? Yung parang, ano, may one week lang sila immersion. That won't do it. 
ito they, it's part of their whole curriculum everything they do is with the community so that actually was a recommendation to me then na ito yung dapat i-doktor para sa bayan mo yung ganito magturo kasi kung hindi rin ganito ituturo kahit ano pa yung um, ay lahat naman tayo naging freshman sa school no lahat ng pangarap mo noon pag graduate mo iba na eh kasi sasabihin ng pamilya mo dapat mo, dapat ka kumita yung yung obligation mo din sa family mo nandoon na yan yung pride mo din na na may specialization ka when in fact baka ang kailangan ng country mo is wag ka mag-specialize baka ang kailangan ng bansa mo is tutukan mo lang yung needs ng community so isipin na ganun kalalim dapat tayo mag-isip So pag pinabasa mo sa akin yan, ganun kalalim ba yung yung primary healthcare na sinasabi mong nandiyan naman sa curriculum? I will be proud. Hindi ka ma, hindi ka mapapahiya. Lalaban po ang gumawa. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying you're reporting it to me. So bulungan mo man man lang yung staff ko na ma'am, i-improve pa natin to. Be, be, be truthful and honest because I I can only share what the experience I got. I'm sure there's so many other dimensions to this na hindi ko pa naririnig. Wala pang nagkwento sa akin, wala pang nag-share sa akin. So kung if we will not be honest with each other, eh ngayon pa lang mag-holy week break na tayo, 'di ba? Eh, what's the point? What's the point? Pasusulatin ko yung staff ko ng committee report para sabihin what? Ay, a CHED pala is doing their job, the UH is doing their job, eh di, wala na lang tayong gagawin, di ba? So, I'm gonna bother with this in the hope and anticipation that we'll really come up with concrete solutions. Not one, not two, but three, five, ten, okay? So, all of you, look look at your own your own sphere of influence na ano pang ma-improve nyo doon, di ba? Let's not be like, okay na, basta kami, sinabi na namin na mag-primary healthcare kayo, pero kung di nila didibdibin yun, there's nothing earth-shaking about what you're teaching them. Aalis din lahat yun. Wala namang magbabago. Wala magbabago. So, ang tanong ko is, yung mga graduate nung Ateneo de Sambuanga, bakit sila ba? Wala din silang offer ba sa ibang bansa? Meron din naman, di ba? Meron din. Hindi ba sila nakakakita na mas maganda yung kinikita na nung mga nag-specialize sa ganito, sa ganon? I'm sure nakikita din. But why? Why do they stay? So find out, and I I hope na mas marami pang example na ganon. It's just that yung naituro sa akin na 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 alam na mas alaming ko is yung Ateneo di Sambuanga na yon. Okay? So sa next hearing, be ready. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Wrap up na tayo. Apo, actually, ma'am, yung what you're referring to is the Doctor of Medicine Public Health Program, Hybrid Program, Innovative Program of Ateneo de Zamboanga. We will take note of that, madam, po, madam chair. For ads, for seed fund for state universities and colleges. So far, Madam Chair, under the Dr. Para Sabayan Law, we have seven SUCs which have opened. Only three universities and only three or four regions now ang wala pong state universities and colleges po na offering Doctor of Medicine. This are Region 3, Caraga, Car, and Region 10. But so far, po meron po. Can I cut you there? Because that's data that's easy for me to get. More importantly, be prepared to tell me, ito bang mga graduate na to, magsistay nga ba sa country natin? Magsistay nga. Stay ba sila sa community nila? Okay, yun ang gusto ko malaman. And then, my next level of question is, ano yung allied health professions na nandyan na makakatulong in the complete delivery of healthcare? Because alam naman natin na kahit mag-graduate pa sila, kahit na mag-stay pa sila, kulang pa rin ang doktor. Okay, I need to move on because talagang 3 o'clock yung deadline ko and it's on me. Okay, I'm not blaming anyone. Ako yung maraming tanong, ako yung madaming side comments. But, um, okay lang? Okay. To be continued ka na? Okay, sige. Thank you so much. So, as I said, uh, the next is PRC, um, Commissioner Erwin Enad. And then after, be ready, TESDA, and then DMW. Oh, committee Chair, members of the committee, uh, stakeholders present today, uh, good afternoon. Uh, this hearing is a uh, welcome development on the part of PRC in as much as knowing the status of the country's human resources for health is necessary for the harmonization of workforce planning, establishment of strategies in health sector covering several areas of concern. Now, uh, as an agency mandated to administer, implement, and enforce the regulatory policies of the national government with respect to the regulation and licensing of various professions, including the health-related professions, we will now uh, provide you a big picture glimpse as to uh, relevant data involving uh, our highly skilled medical professionals, notably professionals belonging to the 10 professions, 
as mentioned in Senate Resolution Number 396, Series of 2023. So, next slide, please. Uh, as of as of March 24, 2023, uh, we have 150, uh, we have 951, 105 nurses, registered nurses with 509297 in active status Mr. chair so meaning to say marami tayong doctors and uh, marami tayong nurses but only 53.55% of our registered nurses are with active status or with valid professional uh, identification card next slide please as to registered uh, midwives, we have 182,339 registered midwives with 69,475 consider, uh, consider, uh, with active status. In fine, we only have 38.1% of our registered midwives with active status or with valid professional identification card. Next. As, as regards to... Yes. Ganito na lang. Kung sa data lang, no, you can yeah. consider that submitted. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'd really like to hear any other you know, observations, comments that you have. Otherwise, I'll deem this submitted in the interest lang of time. Yeah, in the interest of time, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Ms. Chair, we, we have... Supply-wise, we have these health professionals. Re records would show that not all of them are practicing their profession. So, so in the context of that supply, registered, marami tayo. But okay. for those professionals practicing okay. their profession. So, so maybe I can ask if you can all work together and determine, uh, is this common in, uh, is this the case? Because number one, we are a, a supply uh What's the what's the proper term? We we are a country that supplies human health resources yeah. to other countries. So common bayan. If the bulk of this, as was established earlier, are are migrant workers, edi in the immediate future, wala, wala pa tayong agad magagawa. What we can do is what you mentioned, you sec yung agreements, no, that we can figure out and. And then as for the, the portion that are in the country and working elsewhere, then that's where we have more leeway because they're in the country. What can they do? Pwede ba sila mag part-time kung ayaw nil na masyado? That's what we can explore. So maybe you can work out work out those figures clearly and then even on your own for future hearings or technical working groups. Medyo may idea tayo on what can we do. And when we start talking to the nurses associations, the doctors association, we can also find out. Okay. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, actually, the pre my our presentation reinforces the earlier observation of the chat that we have the supply, but the practice of oppression on the prof uh, in, the, in that field, kulang tayo because konti lang yung Active. Oh, kaya nga. So I'm yeah. taking it na nga yeah. to the next level of discussion. So what do we do about it? Is there anything we can do about it? Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Madam Chair, we're limited to our mandate, but we'll work with them on, on, on that area because our, we administer examinations. Uh, this is what our observations is the load passing rate uh, with, with some professions with uh, yung low passing rate is that... Uh, May effect yung multifactorial kasi, like example, uh, Madam Chair, bakit in that profession sa health, mababa siya. But his quality of education, quality of graduation, on the part of the PRC, we have been giving feedback kasi, who are those okay. done performing to CHED. But of course, it's beyond us on the, that yes. closure. So perhaps on that note, no, I, I recognize that na may specific yung mandate. Maybe we can divide the technical working group discussions. Kayo yung magbibigay ng feedback nga dun sa passing and all. Kasi kung hanggang dun lang naman yung ano nyo, scope nyo. So can work na lang together to to address this different. Like who handles the issues with migrant workers? Of course, uh, the MW should be take the lead there, diba? And then yung quality of education, kayo. 
doon din kayo papasok si Sa PRC. Kami, okay? Eh, so Sige. So let's go to the next. Thank you very much, sir. Um, para lang I can call as many in the limited time I have. Uh, next is Tesda, Ms. Rhea Dulampines. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and all the members of the committee. Maybe I'll just fast forward uh, our presentation to the figures, ma'am. I would just like to highlight the accomplishment of TESDA relative to the provision of training and scholarship program. And um, right now, Paul, we have 86 quali uh, qualifications related uh, to health, and we have a total of 21,073 scholarship slots. This was provided last year, Paul, as of December 2022. And out of the 21,000 scholarship slots, we have a total of 20,831 uh, enrollees, and we have 17,710 graduates out of the 20,000. And uh, we had a budget allocation of 446 million for that one. And uh, relative to the qualifications, I'm not sure if this is, these are the qualifications that we need, but we have. Uh, total of 2,102 caregiving uh, with NC2 qualifications, 4,570 for contact tracing level two, and uh, wellness massage, uh, 3,338. This is the top three po as of uh, last year, 2022. So if I can um, include you in that group um, on, parang I go back again to the first speaker, C, I know Dr. Sahil, on the overarching wellness, the wellness of a person, di ba? Kasi sobrang importante yan. Yes. And mas madaling mag-training ng ganyan, uh, kahit na marami din maging demand sa kanila, which I'm sure marami din, yung mga caregivers, di ba? And then yung mga massage therapists, ang dami. Pero madali rin naman tayong mag-training kasi maiksi yung time to train them, di ba? So can I cut you off muna? And if you have just a short closing remark, because it's I, at least I know kung saan paano ko kayo i-group. Okay, uh, thank you, ma'am. As you mentioned, the short courses. We also have the three-year course, ma'am, the, the, okay. the diploma courses, the the health and social services, and the nursing service management. Perfect. Okay. Sige, aralin natin lahat yun because I want to be sure that you're working very closely with them to, to make sure that the support staffing that, that is needed, kaya nila magbigay kasi just like teachers, Ang daming reklamo na yung pinapagawa silang not related to teaching, di ba? Baka naman ganyan din sa mga nurses natin and other allied health professionals, di ba? Okay, thank you. Sige, so as I said, the next is uh, DMW, uh, Yusek Olalia. Good afternoon, Madam Chairperson and to my colleagues. The DMW is a fully constituted department, Madam Chair, manages the deployment of uh, our uh, workers, including our healthcare workers. And... Uh, in order to manage the outflow of our uh, healthcare workers because of the big demand from uh, foreign destination countries, we adopt four initiatives or four approaches. The first initiative of the DMW is under the statutory framework. One of the provisions of Republic Act 122 is that uh, no deployment will be allowed if after consultation with the DFA, there is a need to regulate or ban the deployment of uh, any worker, including HCWs. So under this uh, framework, Madam Chair, we experienced this during the COVID period, wherein the DMW, at that time POEA, imposed a total restriction of the deployment of HCWs, which restriction was lifted eight months after when we allowed a uh, ceiling or a cap for deployment of 5,000 HCWs. The second framework that we adopt is the so-called interdepartment approach or framework. Under this framework, the Department of Labor and Employment issues a department order for the MCS or the Mission Critical Skills. It is an interdepartment framework wherein the Department of Labor, the CHED, DOLE, uh, the MW, PRC are all on board. They meet regularly, take a look at the supply and demand of HEWs and make a proposal on how to manage the deployment of workers overseas. The third framework is the so-called social dialogue and tripartism. We engage the stakeholders of the industry, especially the NGOs, the media, and everybody on board. Incidentally, one of the uh, important projects now by our secretary is the so-called nurse scholarship para sa bayan. We intend to engage the CHED on the grant of scholarship involving the Canadian government, 
we asked the Canadian government to put up a fund in order to provide scholarship to deserving students on, for example, on the third and fourth year. And then after a while, they will serve community service for two years before we allow them for deployment. The last but not the least, Madam Chair, this is the so-called bilateral cooperation. Um, what, what is the status of that recommendation? Is it a recommendation? Is it a policy? It's an ongoing project with Jed, ma'am. Uh, yung uh, itong requirement na yes, community service. Yes. Okay. okay. Kasi that's what I'm hoping that you can all work together. It's a proposal, para it can yeah. be an official recommendation na rin of the committee kung paano natin gagawin yun, ha? Okay, thank you. Sige, go ahead. And the last but not the least is the bilateral cooperation framework wherein we engage with destination countries and forge an agreement that is beneficial not only for the supply but also for the demand of the... Now, that's also a new thing that because obviously the, the department is new, so... It's new. It, wala pa tayong movement dyan. We have a lot of BLAs, uh, okay. but we, we regularly assess and review the BLAs prior to any renewal okay. or the... Can I, can I just have a separate discussion with you on that? Because I'd really like to get more details on Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the last person who is physically present here is a PNA, uh, Mr. Melvin Domingo Miranda, the national president. Sir, you have the floor. Good afternoon, Senator. Um, on the perspective of the Philippine Nurses Association as the accredited professional organization, it's on meeting the targets of the Sustainable Development Goals perspectives from the Filipino nurses as healthcare workers. Uh, the Philippines remains to be the choice of the world when it comes to the healthcare services. Nurses, to be more specific, according to Nare and Cleland Silva in 2021, Smith and Gill in 2021, as if they are made for export, as according to Medallia 2023. In El Maco 2022, roughly 70,000 Filipino nurses work overseas in 2008 to 2012. We have supplied 240,000 nurses of the countries under the Organization of Economic Cooperation, or OECD, such as Austria, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Germany, Iceland, with an estimated outflow of 15,000 to 20,000 per year, according to Alibudbud 2022. In 2017, an estimate of 145,800 Filipino nurses are deployed in the United States, according to Badaloba, as cited in El Maco 2022. The annual emigration rate of Filipino nurse is at 71%, as derived from the estimate between 2012 to 2016, where a total of 26,000 licensed nurses were trained, with an estimate of 18,500 that moved overseas annually, as according to the POEA and Commission on Higher Education, as cited in El Maco 2022. Various nurse reports denotes the recruitment already begins in the Philippine schools and colleges of nursing by providing nursing students competitive educational scholarships in exchange for immigration post-graduation. This is according to Jay Malin 2023 and Requejo 2023. With all this, the Philippine Nurses Association highlights that we are far from reaching the human resource requirements as aspired by the tenets of the universal health care because of the eminent phenomenon of Filipino nursing diaspora because of the various pool factors found outside of the Philippines. It is but time to provide Filipino nurses what is due for them. Specifically benefits, they were deprived since time immemorial. In order to establish a strong human resource for health, HRH as response to dictum of SDGs 3, 8, 10, and 17. PNA Strong upholds its 10 plus 1 welfare and professional development agenda. Number one, inclusive implementation of nursing salary, leveling of nurses' salary for both government and private sector, that is, SG15 for nurses in the private sector and standardized nurse 3 or higher salary scheme in government institution. Because nowadays we have a concern pertaining to the salary grade 15 implementation and 16 because it is not covered by the Department of Budget and Management. They don't have a legal basis for the nurse 3 to adjust their salary up to the nurse 7 because there are no legal basis as according to the DBM. Nurses' compensation, that was on December 2022. Nurses' compensation be the primary focus of legislation. Implementation of salary grade, both in government and private hospitals for all nurses, regardless of nature of employment in private or public sectors, must be the ultimate 
consideration so that nurses will remain in the country. Number two, government should open new plantilla, regular positions for nurses in both nursing education and so health sector. So, sandali ah, parang hanggang number 12 yan, eh nasa number 2 ka pa lang. So, as I said, Summarize. Kung nandyan naman lahat yan, I promise you, babasahin ko yan ngayong araw na to. I-highlight mo lang yung importante um, and then we need to wrap this up. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. So probably one of the important here is the number two because even the Department of Budget Management mentioned last 2022 of December, they still have the vacant position of 4,752 yes. for regular positions. But indeed, why it's still vacant? And okay. we don't hire them. And for the entry level, it's still, uh, it's 1,100 supposedly of the hiring of 1,100 regular positions. So that is still hanging on us because okay. we don't have reports of the. Okay, sige. We will, uh, no, I will look at that. And um, the nurses obviously being such an integral part of our delivery of the healthcare service, rest assured na lahat ng points mo, aralin natin, and we'll see what we can do. Okay? Yes, ma'am. And Thank I you. think one of the highlights din po is gearing towards on the expanded role of nurses with of advanced course. practice well, which, nurses. Which I am, I am yes, a of in the bill that I worked on and I filed, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, nandun lahat yon yung iba-ibang specialization ng nurses and I hope ma ma umpisa na yung hearing na yan. Yes, ma'am. Because it is okay. in our our uh, response to the implementation yes, yes. of universal health care. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. That's it for all the persons who are here today. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of those who are online, Dr. Tony Dance of the UP College of Medicine, Dr. Marilyn Lorenzo of UP Manila, um, Jocelyn Andamo of Philippine Nurses United, and Dr. Edmond Lopez of Philippine Hospitals Association. Uh, as I said, I, I apologized ahead of time because I can only stay till 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, I will ask those who have not spoken, uh, particularly those uh, online, uh, in the next hearing, you will be first. Um, but everyone who's present today, and everybody, uh, whether online or um, physically, uh, the door is open. This topic has been started. My staff is ready to be overwhelmed with your comments. Uh, uh, observations and suggestions and uh, the Senate is on break so we we do have the time to attend to this thank you for the heart Tony <laughs> um, but we will really make this a priority so um, mag holy week lang kayo but um, this week working kami so uh, reach out to us it's just that I do have this time constraint for the three o'clock so um, I will um, uh, I will not have a technical working group yet because part two ng hearing to hear all of you but those of you who want to work among yourselves and with with the assistance of my team anytime uh, to already come up with some answers to the questions I raised um, it would be very much welcome para uh, for the month of April we can be very productive so again my apologies for not being able to accommodate those online but rest assured you'll have your time in the next hearing maraming salamat and this hearing is suspended until the next